Hello and welcome to the AI Tree series. In this video, we are going to talk about AI perception. So, AI perception is a mechanism that allows AI character to perceive the surrounding objects of the game world. So now let's talk about useful components. And the first one is AI perception blackboard. When attached to an object, it allows owner to perceive its surroundings. So, to put it simple, if you want your AI character to see its surroundings, you should attach AI Perception Blackboard to it. And the second component is AI Perception Source. When attached to an object, it allows owner to be detected using AI Perception. So, if you want your object to be seen by AI Perception characters, you should attach AI Perception Source. So now let's talk about useful nodes. By the way, if you're not familiar with nodes and behavior trees, please check out another video where I specifically cover these topics. First node that we need to use is detection signal. It detects signals and those signals can be either alert or neutral. And the second node is blackboard condition. It's a decorator that checks key value. So on the picture on the right, you can see has target, and this is an example of a blackboard condition. So now let's talk about composite nodes, because we are going to use them while creating our example during this video. So composites are nodes that distribute order of execution of child nodes. And each child node can return success, failure, running or aborted. So, first composite node is Sequencer. So, Sequencer executes child nodes one after another. If child node returns running, Sequencer continues to work on it. If child node returns success, Sequencer proceeds to the next child node. If child node returns failure or aborted, Sequencer returns this value to the parent node. And uh, another composite node is selector. So selector selects which child node is going to be executed. So if child node returns running, selector continues working on it. If child node returns success or aborted, selector returns this value. If child nodes return failure, it moves to the next node. And if all child nodes return failure, it returns failure to the parent node. So that is it. Now we are ready to create our example. So as you can see here we have the result of our previous tutorial. So let me quickly remind you. Here we have our character and it has behavior runner component attached to it. And this behavior runner has a behavior tree. So once again, if you are not familiar with behavior trees, blackboards, and other basic concepts of the AI tree, please check out our previous video. Otherwise, let's proceed. So, uh, let's open our behavior tree. So, now we have simple logic. So, our character moves between random positions. So, we have a random position node, which picks random position on the navmesh in a given radius of 5. Then we have a move to node that moves our character to selected position. And then we have a wait node that makes our character wait for a set period of time. So, and all of these tasks are done one after another because they are connected to a sequencer. And this position that, our, that is picked from the navmesh is stored in the blackboard. So here you can see key position. So in this tutorial we are going to do some more logic, we'll make our character follow a target. For that let's create a new key. We'll create a new key, transform key, and we will call it target. Target. So we can close it now. And now let's create some more logic. First we need our character to detect a signal. So let's right-click, create node, 
tasks, common, and detection signal. Here we have signal type alert, which is good for us. We'll set detection time for five seconds, and we will select target as our look target. This will make our character wait for alert signal from our target for five seconds. Then we need our character to move to this target. So let's create node, tasks, navmesh, move to. So here we select key, target. So our character will move to target. And then we have to wait. So let's create node, tasks, common, wait. And let's say we'll wait for one second. We'll manually assign waiting time of one second. That's it. Now we have to connect it all to a sequencer so that it's executed one after another. Create node composites sequencer. Connect everything. And then we need, so now as you can see, we have two branches. So this one I'll call petrol. Yeah, petrol. And this one is weight. So, and this I'm going to call pursue. So now we need one of our branches get executed at a time. So to do that, we have to connect our branches to a selector. But before so here is the scene. We need our character to pursue only if it has target. So to do that, let's select our sequencer, right click and add the character blackboard condition. And has target. Here we'll select both. We'll set key to target and compare it to a set. We are pretty much done. Let's create our selector, connect our branches to the selector, connect our root node to the selector, right click and auto arrange. And there is one more thing. While our character is in petrol state, we need to detect neutral signal. So for that, we will create node, tasks, common, detection signal. Here we'll set signal type to neutral and lost time to, let's say, two seconds. So connect it to our petrol sequencer, auto range, and now we are pretty much done. So let's close our behavior tree. And now we need to attach some components to our objects. So here we have our, our character. So we need to attach AI perception blackboard. Here we'll select key target and add config site. So now, as you can see, our character has a field of view. And now let's select our targets. It's a simple sphere and we'll add component AI perception source. So now it can be detected using AI perception. So now let's click play and see if it works. So now, as you can see, our character is patrolling and here is its fields of view and here is our target. So as you can see now, it sees our target and it starts charging. And as it's fully charged, it starts following our target. But now let's hide our target. So 
it starts patrolling again. So congratulations, we've successfully completed this tutorial.